In today's video, I'm going to be showing you exactly how I eat a starch solution type diet when I'm traveling for a girls weekend. What do I eat and how do I broach the topic about what I'm eating? Watch this video and we'll find out. Hello my honeys, it's Emmy. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Emmy. I'm a nutritionist and the creator of the Slim on Starch program where you work with me as well as a mindset coach and a nutrition coach to lose weight on a plant-based diet. So I made a really bad decision. I put on this sweatshirt and we all know once the sweatshirt goes on, what happens guys? It doesn't come off. I'm being brave. I'm taking off my sweatshirt. It's Friday, it's 4.51. I'm heading over to Healthy Parents for supper tonight. It is Mexi. I asked my dad, are we having Mexi or are we having wraps? And he said, 6 p.m. Tomorrow, I'm heading up to Maine for a girls weekend with my girlfriends that we've been friends for a billion years. And so I'm gonna show you how I navigate this. I, I love situations like these. I love a good challenge when it comes to navigating this way of eating. And I, to be honest, for somebody who was born and raised in the Boston area, I've never really been to Maine. <laughs> Should be fun. Oh, OTD, I'm renting this coat right now. Cute little coat. Oh my goodness. Guys, it's not easy being fabulous. I rented this cute little purse that fits absolutely nothing. My jeans are from American Eagle. My bodysuit, I think this is an Amazon find. Bear's outfit of the day, he is sporting a new fur coat. Unfortunately, the fur coat is not vegan. I'll be talking to him about that a bit later. V is also sporting his springtime jacket, going for a red look today. Now I'm just waiting for my significant other to come pick me up and we're gonna head over to Healthy Parents. What a surprise, we're there every single weekend. <laughs> so we were going to dinner tomorrow and I DM'd the restaurant on Instagram and I said, hey, can you guys do oil-free vegan for me? And they had this beautiful spaghetti squash stuffed with farro and beans and basil. And they said, no problem, we can do that for you. So how awesome is that? The crock pot of beans and rice. Which has basically been turned off. <laughs> See the steam. <laughs> They'll be ready by tomorrow. No, they're ready. They were ready about three hours ago. About two and a half cups of rice, two cups of vinegar, and like three plus cups of water. Dad, people didn't believe how much vinegar goes in. Um, yeah, well, if you buy like the store-bought, it's not as nearly as strong as the Bragg's. Mm -hmm. There's six cans, so there's six cans of beans and two and a half cups of rice. I mean, that's a lot, it's a lot of stuff. Yeah. So we've got a Mexi assembly line. Are we eating indoors or outdoors? Uh, we're gonna eat indoors. So we and have... we have the same old stuff. Do you always do yellow? So yeah, orange, yellow, red. I rarely do green. The Dahlia onions, because they're in, they're in. The Dahlias are in. Healthy mom, taking out the kryptonite. Yeah, I bought the wrong ones by mistake, and I like them even better. Due to popular demand, I am so happy to announce that a Healthy Dad cookbook and a Healthy Mommy cookbook are coming. Details in the down bar. They might even be here by the time you're watching this video, depending on when you watch it. So go in the description bar to learn more about those cookbooks. And here are my tacos, corn tortillas, salsa, veggies, lettuce, rice and beans, all the fixins. My significant other just went for the classic full flour burrito. <laughs> and then let me show you Healthy Mommy's tacos. Beans and rice, and hummus, of course, and hummus. peppers and onions, lettuce, and salsa. Hey, by the way, if you're enjoying this video, please give a thumbs up and subscribe. So I've just arrived at my girlfriend's place. Yes, I am makeup free. I love being makeup free. And I'm gonna make some oatmeal. I'm really not concerned about if I don't get in enough food today. When you're traveling and you are very health conscious or eating an oil-free vegan diet where those foods are not as readily available, 
there is a chance that you're not going to get as much food as you normally do on these days. And that's okay because I'm going to be home tomorrow. I'm going to be home in 30, 48 hours. And so my body is going to catch up for whatever it doesn't get enough of today. If I don't eat enough today, that's okay because tomorrow I'm just going to have a higher hunger drive and I'll make up for whatever I didn't get enough for today. My body knows what it's doing. And so if I don't get enough today, my hunger is probably going to be a little bit higher tomorrow. So I'm not worried about it. I'm going to be home tomorrow. It's not the end of the world. Our bodies and our weight is not a reflection of what we do in a 24 hour period, but it's a reflection of what we do over the course of of a week, for example. So I'm gonna just enjoy today. So I packed a little Ziploc of oats and just got a little bowl here. I am definitely hungry and need this. <laughs> so I'm gonna make myself some oatmeal. We might have a little overflow situation on our hands. <laughs> Adios meal. for traveling i'm gonna have one of these mcdougall vegan black bean and lime lime soups and this is the best flavor <laughs> don't believe anybody that says any other flavor is the best this is the best one and it's a little bit crumpled but it's still amazing and then for dinner, I was so impressed with the restaurant. They were able to make me something oil-free vegan. I just took the vegan item on the menu and voila, it became oil-free. So it was this gorgeous spaghetti squash with farro, mushrooms, and cannellini beans. It was absolutely delicious. So I just returned back from a girls weekend in Maine. I live in Boston and we went up to Maine for the weekend. I know that traveling and social events can be a large source of anxiety for people that are eating a health promoting diet, which when you step back and think about it, it really is wild that you're taking care of your health and that is not the social norm. How crazy is that? But that's our reality that we don't live in a health promoting world. So when we are on our own health, journey, we're actually the different ones. We're the quote unquote extreme ones who are eating fruits and vegetables. Is eating fruits and vegetables really extreme? I know you and I watching this video say no, but we're also surrounded by people that think that our diet may be extreme. So let's talk about how to navigate that. Well, first and foremost, I know that the clients that I personally work with are very dedicated to our work together, the program. They want to live this way. They really do. But the people that I also work with are people pleasers and they are sweet. There go the cats. They are sweet, they are kind, and they never want to cause a riff. So when these social situations come up and when they're traveling, they say, what am I gonna do? I don't wanna be the picky one. I don't wanna be the annoying one who's eating something different. I don't want people to ask about what I'm eating. I just wanna eat and not have it be a big deal. But the reality is people are going to ask, people are going to notice that it's different, and that is okay. It's not the end of the world if somebody asks you what you're eating. It usually bothers you because it's something that you're very sensitive about and maybe you're a little bit insecure that you're on this health journey because the exterior the shell that you're currently in your body may not reflect the body that you're going to have later on in your health journey you'll say I haven't lost the weight yet so I'm embarrassed to be eating this way and I totally understand that and I can understand that you just kind of want to fly under the radar but first let's get some exposure to the fact that people are likely going to ask about what you're eating and if it does bother you let yourself feel that feeling why does this make me insecure why does this make me feel uncomfortable is it because I'm not comfortable in my own body yet is it because I don't have enough knowledge about this and I don't want to embarrass myself if I talk about it is it because my identity has been wrapped up in being the dieter for so long these are the sorts of things that I start conversations with my clients about so I want you to start to open yourself up to this why is it such a big deal for me to talk about what's on my plate? The reality is that what's on your plate is one of the least interesting things about you, especially the clients that I work with. I have one client who is literally a rocket 
scientist. And that's a heck of a lot cooler than whatever she's eating. So keep that in mind too, that your friends are friends with you, not because of what's on your plate, because of who you are as a person. Secondly, I want you to advocate for yourself. And if you want to eat a certain way, you've got to live life on your own terms. When I first started this lifestyle, I was so embarrassed to say that I was eating a certain way because I thought, who the heck am I? I would look at somebody like Dr. McDougall who could say, oh, I'm Dr. McDougall and this is the way I eat. And I would say, well, easy for him to say he's Dr. McDougall. I'm just healthy Emmy and I wasn't even healthy Emmy. Let me remind you, I was once a math teacher who ate this way. I was once a college student who ate this way. I was nobody. I was just eating this way. And it was so difficult for me to say that I preferred to eat a certain way because who was I to say that? And then I decided I'm healthy Emmy. I'm going to eat this way and I'm going to advocate for myself. So I empower you to do the same. Who the heck are you to eat this way? You're somebody who's taking care of themselves. And that is so respectable that you're taking care of the one body that you have. When I see somebody who advocates for their health and says, oh, I prefer to eat this way. Oh no, I'm not going to eat that. I actually prefer to eat that way instead. I'm like, yeah, that is my person. Look at them go. I personally think it's such an admirable quality. So if you think that you're being a nuisance or you're being annoying, when I see somebody do it, I'm like, that's my people. Mm -hmm. You and I will get along. I, I love when people have that quality of standing up for their health and treating their body with respect. So while you might see it as a nuisance and something annoying, I think it's, it's quite admirable and something that I really respect in other people. Now let's talk about the fact that we live in a world that isn't whole food plant-based. And by the way, I'm gonna get to the vlog, but I do wanna talk about this. I, love, I like when we have our one-on-one -on -one time, you know, just you and me, maybe you're doing your makeup, cleaning the house, you're walking on the treadmill, whatever you're doing, like it's just you and me, sister, or brother, or honey, or... I know another large stressor is that we don't live in a whole food plant-based world, right? So when I'm at home and I'm in my kitchen, I have my Brussels sprouts, I have my zucchini, I have my potatoes, I have my cauliflower. I got all my stuff there. Out in the real world, that kind of stuff doesn't exist really. You know, steamed vegetables and baked potatoes aren't that easy to come by, which again, is wild, but it is the truth. And so people can freak out, what if I don't get enough? What if I can't find the food that I need? And maybe that will happen, but guess what? Our bodies have this incredible ability to course correct. So if we go on a trip like I did this weekend, I didn't eat as much during that day as I do under normal circumstances. On Saturday, on Catterday, Saturday, I didn't eat I didn't eat very much, honestly. You'll see in the vlog. I ate three or four times, but I didn't eat as much as I normally do. Why didn't I freak out about it? Because I knew that when I returned home, my hunger was going to naturally raise up a bit and I was gonna make up for, my body was going to make up for whatever energy it missed out on over the weekend. So I didn't starve to death. I did not die and it was not an emergency by any means. All that happened was that when I returned home, I likely ate a little bit more than I did on normal days. I don't track my calories. I don't track my macros. I don't measure anything because I trust that my body has the ability to course correct. And if I don't eat enough one day, then the next day, it'll just make up for it by being a little bit hungrier. So I did stick to 100% SOS, which is Slim on Starch is the name of my program. So I say 100% SOS which I pretty much always do. I very rarely eat things that aren't SOS unless special occasion or if I traveled to London again, I would go to my favorite restaurant, you know, those sorts of once in a lifetime situations. But on a, on a girl's weekend where really my main focus is being with my girlfriends, I, I don't, I don't take that opportunity. So everything that I ate was 100% oil-free, whole food plant-based, all that good stuff. Please give a thumbs up and subscribe and leave the secret comment, which is my body is the guide. Cause like I said, your body can course correct. Thank you so much for watching. I love you honeys and I'll see you in my next one. Woo!